Hello and welcome back to another edition of Trans Talk. Today we're going to discuss speedometer gears. Now we do a lot of shows across the country, NSRA and Good Guys, and whenever we're at those shows we get a lot of requests for speedometer gears. And there are times when we've had them and times when we've not had them, so we're going to talk about that today and I'm going to show you the difference between all the ones we have and why we can get them and why we can't sometimes and why they're hard to get. So. Hang in there for a minute and I'll show you all the differences. Today we're going to start with this section of speedometer gears. Now you can see that we've got a couple different types. Some go inside, some go outside the transmission, so I'll show you the difference. We're going to start right here in the middle. These gears here are very typical of Turbo 350 transmission gears. This gear here bearing the inner gear, which goes on the output shaft of the transmission. There's probably about four different ones, starting at seven, going up to ten. These are your outer gears. They usually range in the 19 to 20 up to about 25, 26 tooth. And this is the housing that they sit in. This is called sometimes called a bullet. And the bullet is the housing that the gear sits in. Now why do we even have these bullets? Because the original ones from the factory were aluminum. And the aluminum would actually wear out. And when they would wear out, the gear would wobble in here. And often we get complaints of the speedometer is erratic or it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Well, what happens is when this housing wears out, this gear actually will fall away from this gear. So it kind of does this and works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. So the inside of the bullet will wear out if it's aluminum and actually the outside housing does wear also, believe it or not. The steel bullet that we have as a replacement also has a better seal in it and for the very inexpensive price that it is, it's well worth getting it at the same time. So when uh, we are asked about speedometer gears, we're often asked I need a yellow or I need a green or I need a red gear. Well, that worked for the OEM or original equipment gears, but in the aftermarket, those colors are not so consistent. So you really need to ask for tooth count. The color doesn't, uh, isn't so consistent. So, but a company like ours, you can go on our website and look, and we have actually a speedometer chart or a little uh, calculator where you can figure out what gears you actually need. So they will determine your inner and outer gear. All you need is a rear end ratio and you need the tire size and we can figure it out. If you can't figure it out on the chart, just give us a call. The guys on the phone can figure it out for you. So we're going to move over here to these gears and exactly this gear again is your inside or drive gear. This is actually happens to be for the 700 uh, R4 or 4L6, early 4L60E uh, transmission. So it's very similar to the 350. Now as you can see the outside gears are much larger and they require different housings. The other thing about 700 and 400 type speedometer gears there are actually two different series. Now what do I mean by that? Well let's look at something here for a minute. Over here we have what's called 30 series gears. Now the 30 series gears means that they're 30, 31, 32, up to 39 tooth on there. So that's a 30 series. Now the 30 series require their own housing. Now the housing is specific to 30s and it has a certain offset and the other thing is, is inside the diameter matches the diameter of the shaft on the 30 series gear. If you watch, if I take a 30 series gear and put it into a 40 series housing, it flops around and will not work properly or work for a very short time. So if you have a 30 series gear, you have to get a 30 series housing. And usually the numbers are stamped right on the outside. This is an aftermarket plastic housing. You can buy the aluminum ones or you can get these also. These are uh, certainly less expensive. Um, but uh, if you have the aluminum ones, I think they're a little better. Let's go over to the 40 series here. 
Now the 40 series, obviously, those gears are going to start with a 40 and go up to, I believe, 45 is the top uh, number of teeth, and I do believe this is it. Sometimes if you've got good glasses or you've got uh, uh, somebody that has good eyesight, they actually do stamp the number of teeth on the gear itself, uh, but it's very hard to read and, and very difficult. Sometimes you can't read it at all. Now see the 40 series will fit in this housing and not wobble around. As you can see on the outside of the housing it's marked as far as 40 series teeth. This is an aftermarket housing also. These have just become available in the last year. Now I did say that some of these gears are very difficult to find and yes they are. Um, about two three years ago literally we cleaned out all of the dealers and the original equipment uh, manufacturers in the country and there was about a year that went by maybe two almost that we could not get any gears at all but now they're being again reproduced in the aftermarket so the availability is very good here's another way to determine what housing you may have you also can't take a 40 series gear and put it into a 30 series housing it just won't go as you can see so it is important that you match the housing and the gear together Again, if you have any questions on that, we can answer those questions over the phone. We also do have a full supply of Ford gears. As you can see, they're very different. Now, what's unusual about Ford is the drive gear on the inside is not replaceable. It is actually machined into the shaft, and in order to replace the drive gear, you would have to replace the output shaft. So, Ford gears there are about four or five numbers that are available from 18 up to about 23. They are available, but you have a limited number of options as far as uh, teeth. Now, people always ask us, how do we figure out, um, you know, if we have a 23, say we have a 23 tooth gear and we need to change it, it's only off about five miles an hour. Well, you can probably make that change by going two different teeth. Um, you usually get about two to two and a half mile per hour per tooth change. That's a general rule of thumb and it doesn't hold true all the time, but um, that's pretty close. Now, the other thing is if you are 10 or 15 miles an hour off, you're going to have to change both. You're going to have to get a matching internal and external gear. You just can't make it up on the outside 10 or 15 mile per hour. So you really should get a match set anyway because what will happen on the inside gears as they go and age, they, what, what you call is they apple core. And what they do is they wear out in the middle. So it's high on the ends and it's shaped like an apple core. So they do wear out and they're going to give you inconsistent speedometer readings. So it's best to replace both at the same time. And to put the inside gear in, yes, it's a little more work. You have to undo your drive shaft and four bolts on the tail housing, but really it's worth it in the end. We have all the clips that are available to hold those gears in, to hold the housings in, and the seals in the gaskets. So that pretty much sums it up for speedometers. We can help you choose the right ones for your car, and um, we do have a supply of Ford ones. One more thing I'd like to add, you know, we're replacing gauges now in the dashes and we're getting new speedometer gears, excuse me, speedometer housings that are programmable. Now the programmable ones, you just have to get this close. Get a, a lot of times, whatever you have in the car, um, you don't have to replace. You can just program the speedometer head to fit your uh, setup that you have. So that uh, should do it for the GM uh, speedometer gears and the Fords. We do have some limited number of Chryslers uh, but we just don't get many calls for that. This is what we get calls for most of the time. That's it for Trans Talk today. Remember, if you see us at a show and you need a speedometer, or we need, you need someone to figure out what speedometer you actually need, let us know. Give us a call. We can figure it out. Sometimes at the shows we have our uh, uh, computer with us and we can figure out what you actually need. But you need your tire size and gear ratio for us to do it. Look forward to seeing you later this year at one of the shows, and if we can help you with a speedometer, that would be great.